Hi, I'm Denny from Springfield Leather. We're back again in the third part of uh, our beginner's carving series. Uh, hopefully we can get this thing wrapped up in this part. Uh, there are three tools that uh, I've got here that we haven't used yet. We're going to go through those right now. Uh, first one we're going to use will be our camouflage, which uh, has a lot of different uses and I'm going to show you two of them right now and one of them is going to be around this flower so we'll take and I'm going to I'm going to set this right around the outside perimeter of our flower all the way around of our flower center so if you'll watch while I do this I'll just get close to it I don't want to actually cover any of that flower center up Okay, I've got that flower center ringed. Now I'm going to go on each petal and just uh, kind of fade that out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but this just adds a little bit of texture. Okay, now that's all I'm going to do to the flower center for right now. But now I'm going to go to a couple of these outside uh, leaves or chicken necks, whatever you would desire to call them, and I'm just going to use the corner of my tool. Okay, if you'll notice, I didn't go all the way, I didn't use my tool flat. I just used that one corner and kind of pushed against the outside edge of those two leaves. Okay, that's all we're going to do with our uh, camouflage for right now. And next is our veiner. This is a lined veiner. It's uh, fairly thin. Uh, it's got a pretty large radius on it. And what I'm going to use it for is to define our leaf petals around the edge of our flower again. So I'm going to take, and I'm just using a corner of this tool, but I'm going right on the edge of this petal. If you see what I did there, now I'm going to go to the next one. This will add a, a look of depth to uh, the center of that flower when you do this. Okay, that's all there is to that. Now while I've got the veiner in my hand, I'm going to go to uh, this flower stem and there's one little part down here that I'm going to uh, just touch with the corner. Just give that a, a little extra effect. Now uh, we're going to go back to our flower center. If you'll remember, we just did it very lightly to begin with. Uh, and the reason we did it lightly is because we've got to reset it now after we've done all this other stuff We've kind of uh, disfigured it So we need to go back and reset it and I'm going to come as close as I can to where I was before But I probably won't hit it exactly, but this time I'm going to use a, a quite a bit more force Now our flower center is set nicely. It's uh, nice and clear the center of it looks fairly deep, like it goes in, like the petal is rounded. Uh, and that's all there is to that flower center. Uh, our last tool, stamping tool that we're going to use is the mule's foot. And uh, we're going to use it just on the flower stem and a couple of places around here where several of the lines come together. But uh, I'm 
going to use it. When I do this flower stem, I'm going to start the my blows are going to be heavy and but they're going to lighten up where where this just fades out and I'm just going to do it 7 or 8 times. But if you notice if you could hear that it just lightened up as as I ended up. Now let's go over here to where uh, this is kind of a big open area where a couple of lines come together and I'm going to do kind of the same thing only I'm just going to do it three or four times. And I think I'll do that right here again. And maybe let's go one more time right here. When you're doing something like that, you have artistic license. Wherever you think it needs a little help or a little extra something, you can do that. But uh, that's all there is to the mule's foot. Now we've gone through uh, every tool that we have in our little arsenal here. And by the way, with this set of tools, I think there's what? There's seven tools here. I can do basically any floral pattern that, that you can come up with. Uh, I can use a lot more tools and add different effects to it, but I can I can make the design like we're doing here on just about any pattern you come up with. But the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our swivel knife, and uh, they call these decorative cuts. And a lot of people are have a lot of trouble with them, but uh, the main reason they have trouble is they are, they try to do too much with them, but. Uh, I'm going to do just a little bit on each flower petal and a little bit on each of these chicken necks. So I'm going to start here. And when you do it, you always want to start with kind of a hook in it. You, you don't want to just start and make a straight cut. I always go kind of like this. They call this a swivel knife because it does swivel. So I'll start at an angle and, and bring it around. It doesn't matter which direction you go from. But uh, I'll start and go with the flow of this flower. Remember our flower center? I told you we wanted to go towards the center with everything we did. We want to remember that with uh, these decorative cuts too. So I'm going to make a little cut like that. Then I'll just add a little bit to it. Make another little cut. And I'll start out heavy and end up light. Just let it float out. first ones you do probably won't be the prettiest ones you ever do, but just practice. Look at other people's uh, leather carving and see how they do it. You know, you can develop a style of your own. You're going to end up with a style of your own whether you want to or not. But, uh, you know, see what you like that other people do and, and try to emulate that. Okay, now I've got this flower. I've got, that's all the decorative cuts I'm going to put on that. That flower is complete. But I'm going to do a little bit on this flower stem. This is a kind of an open area here, so I'll make a couple of cuts on it. Just to add some relief to it. Now I'm going to go to each of these chicken necks, and I'm going to make a few cuts on them. And you don't want your your decorative cuts to be too long but a long feature gets a little bit longer decorative cut and there again you have artistic license in this wherever you think it needs a little something give it a just a slight cut, you know, but there again, don't ever start out straight. Always start with kind of a curve to it. If you'll notice those curves there. Let's go with one right down the center of this stem. I'm going to call that good.
flatten that out a little bit and uh, I think we have completion on our tooling uh, next uh, I'm not really gonna go into uh, the, the finish too much but I was telling you that I like to use those textured tools with the checkered face for the antique process that I use uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that generally after my leather is dry I'll go over it with a light coat of Neats Foot Oil. You can use olive oil. There's a lots of different oils that you can use, but just use a light coat. Uh, let it set for a little bit. It'll start to lighten up. If it's too light in one area and not light enough in another area, just add a little oil to it. To, but don't do too much at a time. Just use a light coat. And after that's set for a while, you can... Uh, either put a resist on it which is a, a, a clear coat of some sort we have we have a lot of different ones I like a masters quick shine it's an aerosol that you can just spray on and what that'll do is it'll seal the surface of the leather that you've got of your design and you can go over that with a, an antique paste and the antique paste won't actually soak into the pores of the leather it'll just sit on top and you can after you put that antique paste on you can wipe it off and uh, the the higher parts of your design will be wiped clean and the the lower parts will collect some of that antique paste and, and that's what it will give it a two-tone effect uh, and uh, i'll show you one here this is the way i finished this project a while back i used a dark brown antique paste on this and I didn't put a resist on it before, so it did color this leather quite a bit. It's darker than it would be if you used the, the resist. But after, you, after you've done the antiquing that you're going to do and let it dry good, then you need to go over it with a, a top coat, a, a clear top coat. And uh, that's what you'll have. But anyway, uh, I hope you get interested in this and try it on your own. Thank you.